3-6, solving systems using matrices. So in this section, we're going to explore one more way to help us solve a systems of equations. Uh, we've, done we've done graphing, we've done substitution, we've done elimination. So the last way that we're going to do is solving using a matrix. This way is slightly more complicated, um, especially for a smaller matrix but it really does shine as you get to bigger and bigger systems of equations. And our objective is to represent a system of linear equations with a matrix, and then solve a system of linear equations using matrices. And you can use a matrix to represent and solve a system of equations without writing the variables. Okay? And these actually have a lot, a lot of practical applications and places where we can use a matrix in everyday life. Okay. We see the results of matrix math right, in every computer-generated image that has a reflection or distortion, such as light passing through rippling water. Okay. This is the last video. Um, before computer graphics, optics uses matrix math. It helps us calculate electrical properties of a circuit, right? and that includes voltage, amperage, resistance, all that stuff. Um, it supports graph theory. In, adjacency, in an adjacency matrix, integer values show how many connections a particular node has. Uh, we use it in probability and statistics. Uh, probability vectors use matrix, and uh, stochastic matrix is a square matrix whose rows are probability vectors. And um, it also simplifies linear algebra. So there's plenty of plenty of practical applications for using a matrix. So let's first see what a matrix is, then see how it works and how we identify things in it, and then finally solve a system using one. So first, a matrix, what is it? It's a rectangular array of numbers, right? We usually display the numbers within brackets, which are right there. Okay. The dimensions of a matrix are the number of rows and columns. Rows, which go left to right, and columns which go up and down right rows like a movie theater they go left to right columns hold up some people's houses uh, and they go up and down okay a matrix matrix a this matrix right here which we represent with a capital letter happens to have two rows and three columns and it is a two by three you read that as two by three matrix right you don't say two times three you don't go to Home Depot and say, can I have a two times four piece of wood, right? You say two by four. Okay. So when we're talking about matrix, when we want to say, when we want to list dimensions, we use the multiplication sign, but we read it as by, okay? And we can write it as matrix A or as matrix A with the dimensions attached, two by three. Okay. Each number in a matrix is a matrix element. We identify the element by its row and column numbers. So in matrix A, we read this notation as A12, not A12, A12. Okay, that's the element in row one, column two. And in A12, row one, column two, right, if we look, that's the number four. Okay, so row one, column two is four. Okay, so in this one, what is A? two, three. So let's A two three would be what is in row two, which would be here, column three, which would be here. So row two, column three, we can see that we would have eight. Row two, column three would be eight. Okay. One more of those real quick. A one two, that's row one column two, which would give me two. Okay. So the answer would be two. All right. So let's see how we can take a system of equations and represent it within a matrix. So we can do this, right? We can represent a system of equations efficiently with the matrix. Each matrix row represents an equation. The last matrix column shows the constants to the right of the equal sign. Each of the other columns shows the coefficient of the variables. Okay? We do not take, we do not write the variables inside a matrix. 
We also don't put that these are added together, even though they are in the system of equations. All we do is take out the coefficients. We draw a vertical bar to replace the equal sign and to separate the coefficients from the constants. And then we write the two constants on the right-hand side. Okay? Very simple to do. So let's take a look. Let's turn this system of equations right here into a matrix. Very, very simple. First, we draw my brackets. And now we put my coefficients, 2. And then next to the y is a 1, and then a 9, 1, negative 6, negative 1. And then I put a line to, to draw to represent my equal signs. Okay. If a variable does not have a coefficient, right, we need to put a 1 in front of it to represent that we only have one y in that system. And of course, we don't put positives, but we do put negatives. So now this system right here is going to be a little different because it's not in, in standard form, right? We have x's and y's on different sides. We have variables on different sides. That's not what you want. Okay. You always want to rewrite your system so it would look like 5x plus y is equal to 1. Now all the variables are on the left-hand side, which is good. So now my matrix, when I write my matrix, if I look at my first equation, it would be 1, negative 3, 1, 6. Now my second equation doesn't have a y. So you don't want to do... You don't want to do that, or you don't want to put in the 3 in the same place, in, or in the, in the wrong place. You have to show that there is no y, so we would put a 0 for y, and then a 12. And then same thing for z in the last equation. We have 5, 1, 0, 1. Close my matrix off. Put my line to represent my equal signs. And there would be my, uh, my matrix representing this three-dimensional system. Okay. Let's go backwards. Let's take that system and write, or sorry, let's take that matrix and write a system. So that tells me that 5x plus 2y would be equal to 7, and that y is equal to 9. Okay. I don't have to write 0x. I never did. Best to solve this system using substitution, since y is by itself. Okay. One more. 2x would be equal to 6, and 5x minus 2y would be equal to 1. Again, a nice, easy system to solve using substitution since x is equal to 3. Okay, so now let's get to how to actually use a matrix to solve a system. Okay? So you can use a matrix that represents a system of equations to solve the system. In this way, you do not have to write the variables. To solve the system, to solve the system using the matrix, use the steps for solving by elimination. Okay, so we're going to try to eliminate variables. Okay? Each step is called a row operation. Right? My goal is to use row operations to get my matrix to look like this if it's two variable system, or this if it's a three variable system or if it becomes bigger to have ones down a diagonal and then zeros everywhere else. This helps us because the first matrix, rep matrix represents the system of x is equal to a, y is equal to b, or x is equal to a, y, b, z is c. Okay? Because there's only that one, the only the one, and then the bar, and then an actual ABC, which represents some sort of number. Okay? So my goal is to turn whatever matrix I start with into this guy or this one right there. Okay? And then that will show me my solution. What am I allowed to do? I'm allowed to switch any two rows. And I can do that because if I think about a systems of equations, if I switch two rows around, that doesn't really affect the system at all. Okay? We can multiply a row by a constant. I was allowed to do this as well. Recall back to make an equivalent system. All I had to do was multiply one equation, make sure everything, by a number. As long as I multiplied all the parts of it, then I would have an equivalent uh, system. I could add one row to another. And we did this with elimination too. We were adding together 
<coughs> different equations all the time to produce a new equation with the goal of getting rid of one of the letters um, to make a, make a simpler form of the equation. Okay? And then we can combine any of these steps together in order to solve the system. Okay? So the goal is to get my to get my matrix to look like this. And then A would be X and B would be Y. Okay? There's a definite order that you should try to simplify this matrix. You should start with the top left, then get a zero, then solve for this one, and then finally to solve for this zero. So we want to go here, 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 okay? and getting each of those numbers as we go. That will make this system easier to manage. All right, so let's try one. Here's my equation. Now you're probably looking at it and saying, well, well, why can't I just solve that using substitution or multiply the first one by a negative two and solve with elimination? You can. The problem is, and it's probably easier in this case, it becomes slightly more difficult when you have a, uh, a when you have a system that is bigger. Okay? So as this system gets bigger and bigger and bigger, right, we want to use, uh, it becomes a little bit easier to use a matrix or a computer to help us use a matrix. So let's set up the matrix. One, four, negative one, two, five, four. Okay, so there's my matrix. Okay. My first step is, of course, to change that number into a one. Well, luckily, that is already done for us. So the first step is done. My next step is to change this into a zero. So now I have to decide how I want to do that. Well, maybe I can multiply the first equation by negative two and then add it to the second equation, the first row by negative two and then add it to the second. So let's do that. So we're going to take negative two and we're going to multiply it by the first row, one, four, negative one. Okay. And then this gives me negative two, negative eight, positive two. I'm going to then add that to two, five, four, giving me zero, negative three, six. Now, this new row that I have just come out up with, I can replace it. I can replace either one of these these two rows. I can replace the top row or the second row. Well, the top row already has a one where I wanted to have a one, but the second row doesn't have anything I want. So let's replace my new row with the second row, which makes my new matrix look like one, four, negative one, zero, negative three, negative six. All right. So now my next goal is to turn that into a zero or sorry, into a one. So the way I would do that is I would multiply the entire second equation by negative one third, in essence, dividing by negative three. So if I do that, if I take negative one third, zero, negative three, negative six, my new row would be, well, that's still zero. Negative one third times negative three is gonna be a positive one. Negative one third times negative six is going to be a positive two. So that is my new equation. And so I can, I can now replace the second line with that. Again, I'm replacing the same line again because I wanna turn negative three into a one. So my new matrix turns into one, four, negative one, zero, one, two. And then my last goal is to change this four into a zero. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to multiply the last equation by negative four, which would give me one, two. So this would be negative four. No, sorry. It would be zero, negative four, negative eight. And I'm going to add it to the new, to the first row. One, four, negative one.
zero, negative four, negative eight. Why do I feel like I made a mistake? One, zero, I definitely made a mistake somewhere once. And here's my mistake, okay? Um, this is a positive six. I don't know why I put a negative six. So this changes to a positive six, which then makes that a negative two. So that's a negative two, a negative two, and then this changes to a positive eight, and there we go. So that should look familiar from class. Okay, so now here's my answer where we have one, zero, seven, zero, one, negative two. Okay. And my answer then is going to be right there. So X would equal seven, Y is gonna equal negative two. Seven, negative two is the point where these two lines intersect. Okay, so slightly more complicated than trying to use uh, substitution or elimination but there is a definite definite method to how to go about solving these okay um, with the case of a larger matrix with the case of a three by three my goal is to get it to look like a zero one zero b zero zero one c okay and we would go here first then I would go, whoops, zero, zero, one, C. Okay, so once I have my matrix, right, I would go there, then here, then here. Next, I would get this one in place, then a zero, then a zero, then this one, then zero and zero. Now, of course, this is going to take a long time without the help of some technology. Luckily, um, most matrix, uh, there's a lot of way, there's a lot of matrix calculators out there that could help us, okay? And most of them have a function called reduced row echelon form or just row echelon form. But reduced row echelon form is what we're looking at. And we'll talk more about what the difference is uh, at the end of the year when we get to the section about all about matrices, okay? Um, if you can find a calculator that will do this for you, it will do all the row operations for you. And you can use this to solve a system of equations. Uh, a couple good ones. This one for iOS, the matrix calculator for Android, uh, Bluebit is an online one, and the Casios that I have in class also work pretty well on doing this. Okay? And if we have a matrix set up, which we do for this one, two, three, negative one, one, negative four, nine, two, eight, negative two, zero, two, three. All I have to do is input this into some sort of matrix calculator to give me the answer. And it will pop out the solution, which is gonna be that A is gonna equal one half, B is gonna equal two thirds, and C is gonna equal two, okay? Which of course would have been very, very difficult to try to figure out by ourselves. Okay? Let me go back and walk through how to solve this matrix by hand. And unfortunately, I don't have time. Uh, Parasite's about to start, so I'll have to update this later, okay? So for now, that's 3-6, solving systems using matrices.